Live from Alphonse Stadium at the University of Maine, it's a high school Class D football matchup on a Thursday night. Tonight, the visiting Lions of Belfast take on the Crusaders of John Bapps Memorial High School. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Small, along with Brian Sullivan. Glad you could join us on this Thursday night. Kind of strange to say that. And let's talk about the weather first, uh, Brian. Uh, a little hot when we got here, but it's cooled down pretty nicely. Yeah, a little hot. A lot hot. But it is. The, the shade, the way the stadium's constructed, really nice. The, it casts a nice shadow over the field. And those issues that we thought throughout the day were going to be so impactful to these teams, perhaps still going to be there for a late September or early September game, but not going to be, you know, crazy for these guys to deal with tonight. A couple of teams, 0-1, rough starts to the season, looking to turn it around tonight. Yeah, both teams, we talked with both coaches leading up uh, to this game tonight. They said just a couple of bad series and things got away from them, you know, just kind of, kind of spiraled out of control, hoping they can put that in the past and come out of here with a victory tonight. Always exciting for high school teams when they play on the big, the U Main field. And, of course, John Babs has done this before, but this is new for Belfast tonight. Yeah, uh, nomad, uh, John Babs a little bit nomadic. They they bounce around. They've been here before, and, and you spoke with Belfast coach. He said, they're excited, a little nervous. <laughs> Same as me, John. Here we go. <laughs> you know, too. this is a big stage at the D1 <laughs> school here, so we'll see how it all plays out. But a uh, couple of seconds here, we'll figure out how uh, who's going to come out of here with a victory. All right, should be a great matchup tonight. Class D, Belfast Lions taking on the John Babs Crusaders. We've got the kickoff for you right after this. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. When you have flooring you love, it's not a chore to clean them. It's just fun. Buy from the best, forget the rest with Don DeKal Mainwood Floors. I feel good. Welcome back to Morris Field at Harold Alphonse Stadium. We are set for high school football. The visiting Lions of Belfast won the toss, Sully, and they have deferred. They're going to kick off. Yeah, we uh, get the action underway here. We've got Logan McMahon back deep to receive this one. Goes uh, to number nine himself and uh, takes it upfield. He took it at about his own 25-yard line. He's got some room on that left side. Only Elias Higgins to beat, and the quarterback slash kicker has to push him out of bounds. So John Bapst, who gave up a big return, to start their game last week has a big one themselves. Yeah, I think the st uh, story of uh, this week's game, John, we mentioned it off the top of this broadcast, is who can put last week behind them and start moving forward. And I think number nine for John Bapps, Logan McMahon, that's a name that we will be calling a lot tonight, both offense and on defense. So the Crusaders will go on offense from the Belfast 44. Great field position to start the game. Aiden Olette is the sophomore quarterback. He's going to pitch it back to Will Cashman. And he's got some room on that right side as he gets a nice gain down inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. They've been running that play for a long time. Just a toss to the right side. And uh, who's fast enough to get to the corner? Cashman gets a nice pickup for John Babs to start. John Babs, John, going to run a, a triple option offense out here. So you'll see the quarterback reading each play and making a decision. That one obviously uh, a, to a called toss. But as we go through this thing, we'll see uh, a lot of triple option look for the Crusaders. 16-yard pickup for Cashman. A first and 10 now for John Babs from the 28. And the pitch is going to go out to McMahon, and he's got some room down that left sideline. Did he get out of bounds? I thought they called him out of bounds, but he kept going to the end zone. I think it was going to come back to where he stepped out at about the, what, eight? Yeah, tipped on through the tulips down there along the sideline, but I think he did step out at the eight. You're right about that one. So, yep, they're going to put it at the, we'll give him the right amount of yards here. They're going to put it at the seven. 
21 yard pickup for McMahon. So two good runs to start the game. And look at this, the year are living dangerously as a couple of uh, Belfast Lions come in and make the hit on the QB. He's able to almost a chess pass look like a basketball game. Gets it out to Logan McMahon and a great pickup and the Crusaders are in business early. They sure are. Two plays on offense and it's a first and goal from the Belfast seven yard line. Cashman goes in motion. There you see all of that misdirection and with that triple option. And at the bottom of the pile, quarterback Olette keeps it. And really no game. He saw McMahon having all that fun early. He said, I get to at least get into the, you know, the stat books here anyways. And that's part of the triple option look. Because you, you've got to almost fail a few times so that they respect every option of that, uh, of all the variances that come with that offense, and keep them honest. He saw that stop made by Tanner Carson, the defensive tackle for Belfast. He's a senior captain. We'll probably call his name quite a few times tonight. Second and goal from the seven. In motion is McMahon, and Olette's going to keep it himself, and right up the gut into the end zone. Seven-yard touchdown run, and John Baps gets on the scoreboard first. That will ensure that you will have some uh, nice-looking stats on the stat line as keeps it himself. Yeah, follows uh, a nice lead blocker and a great push up front. Give some credit to the offensive line for the Crusaders to make it to big holes for their guys, and Olette just keeps it, dives in to that uh, U-Main end zone, our first score of this ball game. So that didn't take long. 10.38 to go here in the first quarter. And the extra point is up, and it is good from Omar. So just like that, 7-0 Crusaders early, early in the first. Omar, we watched him doing his thing out here in pregame, and that kid's got a leg. Man, oh, man, I thought uh, he was knocking him stiff from, you know, I think at first he was at the 25 and then at the 30. So you're talking, you know, 42, 47, he was banging him through. Yeah, almost took out one of our cameras in the end zone there. <laughs> well, we're back in Newport Saturday afternoon. The Comus Warriors host the Winslow Black Raiders in Newport. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. And we get kind of that mini buy, like the NFL looks sort of, right? With Thursday night game to, uh, it's only a few days. I know. But, yeah, every little bit counts. <laughs> That's right. We got a couple extra days to rest up. And we mentioned this uh, in the pregame is that the weather, we're all monitoring it. You know, it was a scorcher of a day. The last couple days have been so hot. But on the field, cooled down nicely. I, I saw a multiple pallets of water being trucked in <laughs> on both sidelines so I think that the teams and those supporting the teams have planned accordingly for the conditions here tonight which when we were down there uh, doing our thing on the field pretty nice compared to what to, if you're making away your way around working and today I don't want to complain but I'm going to it's hot up here it's wildly hot it's up really here. hot up here in the press box but even with the window open a little bit a maybe a little plates. maybe a little bit <laughs> So, Anes Omar, who we talked about his field goal and extra point ability. Let's see how he does on the kickoffs from the 40 here. So, now the question will be, can Belfast move beyond that? Same thing happened to him last week. Quick start uh, by the opponent. Ended up losing that one. Wow. We need to get something going here offensively. Kick that down to the 10. Riker Evans for Belfast is going to have about a 13-yard return up to the 23. But, my goodness. To the 10 yard line. That's a pretty good boot. What a weapon that is. Absolutely. To have that in your arsenal to be able to pin them deep. I mean, you compare starting field position. John Babb starts at near midfield. Now Belfast has got to go from the 25 on. So Belfast will go on offense for the first time tonight. Much like John Babb's, they had a rough first game last week, losing to Lisbon 34 to 12. Coach Fairbrother thought they really had about six minutes in that second quarter where they just kind of let things get away from them. And Lisbon scored 22 points just like that. So he says they're still confident. Elias Higgins, the senior quarterback in the backfield, hands it off to Cayman Weatherington. He's going to get the bulk of the runs tonight uh, in the running game. He takes it up to about the 24-yard line. Logan McMahon again coming up with a big stick there. So we mentioned it off the top. We weren't kidding. You were going to hear that kid's name a lot tonight as he read that one pretty well. Coming up from the free safety spot and uh, stopping that one. I thought there was going to be a nice little game there for the Lions. But, yeah, you did mention, John, that 
things got away from Belfast for about six minutes last week. You go from practice to then a couple of preseason games, mm -hmm. and the speed gets amped up, but that speed of that first game against opponent like Lisbon, hard to duplicate in practice games and in practice themselves. So Belfast uh, working to try and get up to, you know, regular season speed. So a second down and eight. The handoff goes to Teddy Dyer. And again, the John Babs defensive line is right there to stand him up. Yeah, just uh, swarming to make that one, uh, make that stop. And now brings up a passing uh, situation, which both teams find themselves comfortable in. But we'll take another look at that. Hayden Rollins, the linebacker for the Crusaders, making that stop. Yeah, just gets there, uh, wraps his arms, and then uh, hangs onto that jersey for dear life to take him down. We'll give Dyer about one. Dyer, the, uh, Coach Fairweather says he's kind of your tack in between tackles guy, and Weatherington's going to be your kind of get the more carries into the outside guy. So it's second, or third down and seven. Going to pass it out in the flat there and just a little too far intended for Andrew Fairbrother. Yeah, just a little miscommunication there. We thought we were running an out. Ended up running an in. Pitches it towards the sideline. And now fourth down and a punting situation for the Lions. So big uh, three and out forced by the John Baps defense. Eli Veyu is the punter for the Belfast Lions. He'll be kicking it away from just beyond his 15-yard line. Pretty good uh, low punt. That's going to get a great Belfast bounds. Going to roll out of bounds at the 35. We'll be back after this. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get Luke and get sold with Next Home Experience. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. Get looped, get sold with Next Home Experience. Back to action here in Orono. Hayden Rollins, the fullback for the Crusaders, picked up three on that first down carry. It'll be second down and seven here from the 38-yard line. John Bapps already up 7-0. A little pass out there right in the seam. And it is caught by McMahon. And, well, you're not kidding, Sully. We're going to say his name a lot tonight. He's a kid who came to uh, camp. They had a team camp up here at the University of Maine, according to Coach O'Connell. The uh, coaching staff took a liking to what they saw, took his, as Coach called it, measurables. And if you look at him, 6'3", 200 pounds, looks like a kid who could be a D1 athlete. Dan said to us that if the kid wants to, he could do it. So we'll see uh, where he ends up uh, after he's done his uh, high school career. And, and he also mentioned that, John Babst, as we go through this, they want, to, they want to throw the ball. They don't want to have to be in situations where they need to throw the ball. So you see evidence of it right there. There goes McMahon in motion, and there's that pitch. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Belfast almost had a hand on it, but here goes McMahon down the sideline, pushed out of bounds. I tell you, that was almost tipped by Luke Littlefield of Belfast, but uh, somehow Alette got it out to McMahon. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, again, living dangerously. We'll take one more look at it. Look how close... This comes to uh, going the other way. Pitch just missed it. I think he throws that uh, lion paw out there a little bit farther. Perhaps it uh, he does get a hand on it, but another nice pickup. Yeah, 19 McMahon. yards. He's had two runs tonight, 21 and 19. Pretty good. Pretty well, good start. If you're going to run that triple option offense, it really starts with having trust in your quarterback to make the right decision and take care of the football. And that's uh, something that comes with you know being battle tested. So first and ten. Oh, my goodness. Going to be dropped for a huge loss. I thought I heard a whistle there for a moment, but uh, nope. But uh, Riker Evans, 
who uh, Coach Fairbrother, Fairbrother said he's one of two or three kids who is not going to come off the field, basically. That is a huge loss. Took him all the way back to the 42-yard line. Loss of seven. Getting hip to uh, what John Babs is trying to do. A really big play for Belfast, too. You figure five, six straight plays, nothing but positive for the Crusaders. A seven spot already up on the board. Now getting them into a second long is just yeah. a doctor order. Yeah, first and ten goes to a second and 17 here for John Babs. They go right back to McMahon. He cuts it up the middle. Oh, my goodness, what a hole. Look out, there he goes. Touchdown, Logan McMahon. 42 yards on the scamper. Barely touched. That's the first time they've given that look. So let's show you that one more time. A bit of a counter look. Fakes one hand off, comes back against the grain. And as you mentioned, John, nobody going to get their hands on Logan McMahon as he goes into the end zone for another score. 13-0 with the extra point to come for the Crusaders. Wow. He's got some speed. Give uh, credit to the guys up front. Opened up that little seam, and he did the rest. Here's Omar again. Oh, Holder dropped it, so it's going to remain 13-0 John Baps. We're back after this. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings, and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. The action on the field. Want me to keep talking? Welcome back to Morris Field at Harold Alphonse Sports Complex. John Small along with Brian Sullivan. A special Thursday night high school football game for you. You know the NFL is playing tonight. They've got their own Lions uh, in action, but do we got the Belfast Lions in yeah, action? Yeah, absolutely. They're about to get the football. I think I saw maybe a Lions jersey down there in the stands. <laughs> I do as we sit up here. I see a Mac Jones jersey. I see a, a Stephon Diggs jersey as wow. well. So you've got some Bills fans. I think he's maybe he doesn't go back to the the Vikings days, but you know you gotta. When you got John Babs, she got a you know a wide collection of kids coming from all sure. communities. So I think that also encapsulates a wide collection of. Football fans, but there's room for everybody here, right? You know, Patriots sure. fans, Dolphins fans, sure. doing games together. You can all, we might Look get us. Out we all coexist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for now, until the season starts. So you can see Belfast certainly has respect for Omar, who kicked it all the way to the 10 last time. And both uh, Evans and Duso are back at their own 10. Coach O'Connell having a conversation with the officials. Not sure what that was about. You can tell Coach O'Connell. He's from the uh, from the Ken Griffey Jr. era of, <laughs> of sports fans because he goes with the backwards hat, which, you know, there are some who say you can't do that, but I'm totally fine right. with the backwards hat. Too. And you've got to figure that at some point in his life, Coach O, big Mariners fan. Well, he's been here a long time, 20th season on the sideline, won the state championship back in 2008. Michael back so far that he's a big Ken Griffey Sr. fan. I don't know. Oh, I gotta, <laughs> there you have to find ask out. Him. Look at that, back to the 8-9 yard line, where Belfast is going to take it. And the return, pretty good return, comes up to the, see where they're going to put it, the 28 yard line. And John, so you mentioned a couple of kids from Belfast aren't going to come off the field. It's a hot night, you're going to wear down, but offensively, 
you would like to build up something positive, move the chains, keep the offense on the field, not just keep on running that defense right. out there to try and contend with what's been a very potent offensive attack for the Crusaders. So, you know, still very early in this thing, but if you're Belfast, got to get something positive going. What, what do you trust? What plays do you like? Let's run those here. So Belfast went three and out on their first offensive possession. Higgins going to throw it. Over the middle. Got a man and oh, just dropped in front of the John Bapps defense. That was Andrew Haas out there. Two of the, one of the two tight ends that Belfast will run out there. And Higgins is a kid who threw it 25 times last week. 12 to 25. And you can see, he's got a great arm. You know, that's a nice looking throw. A couple we've seen just, just a bit off the mark. But, you know, 190 yards, two touchdowns and a pick throwing last week. Those are big numbers in high school football. Yeah, they're going to hurry it up here. Higgins in trouble being pursued. He's got some room on that right side. Fires it back across his body. And it's almost intercepted over there. Almost picked off. If you're Belfast, again, nice looking throw there. Maybe... You got a big kid back there at quarterback. Think about trying to throw a deke on that guy in front of you and pick up a little action with uh, your legs uh, as the quarterback. So uh, certainly something he's capable of doing. I think that was McMahon over there who uh, got a hand on it. So brings up a third and ten for Belfast from their own 28. High snap. Higgins hauls it in. Going to throw it deep down the field intended again for one of his big tight end targets. Again, Haas and... Pass a little bit high, but really good coverage by the Crusaders. Yeah, just missing by inches, uh, Belfast, so far here today. A little miscommunication, and you said there, too, that one just a bit off target. And again, you find yourself in a fourth and long in a probably situation where Belfast is going to have to punt it away. So Eli Veyu is the punter for the Lions. His second punt of the night. Nice high kick. Taken by McMahon at about his 40, and they better figure out a way to stop this guy tonight. Oh, he got hauled down from behind, and I thought they were going to throw the flag. Horse collar there. I think that was probably a little bit of an unnecessary tackle. I think he was running out of bounds. We'll see here. Frustration perhaps uh, moving yeah. over, but once again, Logan McMahon just uh, in open space using that speed. Drags him down, yeah. I don't think that's uh, anything too malicious. Nope, just uh, just trying to get to him. Jackson Falkingham there, chasing him down. So that's going to give John Baffs tremendous field position. Our referee, Bill Patterson, tonight calls the horse collar, and let's see where, this, where the football winds up. It's going to be tremendous field position for the Crusaders after an excellent punt return. Yeah, so you figure this, uh, they're marking this thing from the 29 in, so it's going to get up to just about the 15-yard oh yep. line if it's a 15-yard uh, penalty. And it is. So, yeah, 13. 13-yard 13 line of Belfast is where John Baps will go on offense, and you can tell they're anxious. They're coming right up to the line. I'll let the sophomore quarterback for the Crusaders. He's got a lot of different choices back there, doesn't he? It's Cashman who goes in motion, but he gives it right up the middle. I think that's Rollins, the fullback, getting the call. Yeah, Coach O said that uh, he's a kid who is a big part of what they do offensively and defensively. And when you got to run that option, got to respect the fullback yep, dive, right? Sure we've do. seen that in so many games that we've done, teams that have run the, this option well. Even, and we mentioned it earlier, your failures sometimes end up being successes because sure. it makes the defense respect that portion of the triple option attack. It's a four-yard pickup. It'll be second down and six from the nine-yard line for John Baps. And they're on the move again. This time it goes to Rollins again. Oh, nope. I thought it went to Rollins and a pitch goes back to Cashman. Easy touchdown. Nine yards and Will Cashman is in for the touchdown. And that, John, is why you run the fullback dive Oof. on first down. I was, that's, what I, that's what I thought was happening again. Well, Fan Cam is sponsored by Maine Wood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and Dekel Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. I once had a floor that I had redone by to Kel Floors. Did a fantastic job. A little testimonial. It was the, it was really nice. Nothing like a freshly worked over hardwood floor, right? You ever try to do oh. one yourself? Oh, oh yes. 
Not fun. Not fun. Not fun. There are certain jobs in this life that you hire out to the experts. That's one. If you want it done right. <laughs> if you want it done right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Cashman with the nine-yard run. Kick from Omar is good. And, boy, it didn't take very long here in the first quarter. It is 20 to nothing, John Bast. And uh, this is just exactly what Belfast did not want to have happen tonight as they really wanted to get off to a good start after that game against Elizabeth last week. It really just starts with one play, one first down. Get something yeah. positive going. They've struggled to connect in the passing game thus far. And I'm sure that the coach is over there saying, hey, a lot of football left in this thing, so let's just get a little something going here, guys. Well, we want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to bring you this game. Please let them know that you appreciate it as well. And there's the list right there. Couldn't do it without them. Getting John Small to do a game doesn't come cheap, so <laughs> right. it takes a lot of these people. It takes a village. Oh, uh, yeah, you found me out. To get uh, you up here. You know, one thing, John, you see that, that nice view of the facilities here at the University of Maine, and they're playing on new turf, but as we sit here from our broadcast booth, uh, you can see some of the work that they've done, mm -hmm. and there's still work to be done, and I know that Alyssa... Uh, was live up here. Alyssa Thurlow, who's here among our, our crew, was here earlier. Got a chance to chat with uh, chat with Jew Killy, the director of athletics. They're just getting started, you know. As soon oh, yeah. they're going to have a basketball facility that's, you know, we all love the pit for what it is, but that old dog's got some fleas, you know. And <laughs> so, and it's, it, one day it will, you know, it's nice. It's, it can be an electric atmosphere, but one day they'll have, you know, an, a state of the art, a cutting edge facility field hockey first rate oh my goodness isn't the new field hockey oh yeah as good as it comes softball very nice you know just all part of that big alfond uh, grant that they're working towards it this field turf is one of the first places that uh, got replaced with that money it is true high above uh of the field up here you really can get a, a great view of the campus and see all the, the great things that have been done and so many more to come. So John Baps is now ready to kick it off. Omar, who we've seen that leg, and he got one to the 10, then he got up to the 9 last time. Let's see what he does this time. Well, he's pretty pretty consistent. That was a little little shorter. About the 14-yard line where Duso takes it and brings it up to about the 28, 29-yard line, and that's where Belfast will go back on offense. You know, a team that, like you mentioned, lost to Lisbon in week one, but what they want to do, throw the ball. Their passing game, stronger than it has been in years past. they got a couple of good receivers. And what a, we mentioned this, what a weapon this kid is oh my for John Baps. I've been here on Saturdays uh, at main games, and both <laughs> kickoff specialists don't get it that deep. So first and ten for the Lions from their own 29, just trying to get something going. Two, three and outs so far. Elias Higgins, the second-year quarterback, senior this year. Got a man in motion, going to give it to Weatherington. And he might have lost the football, and John Babs thinks they have it. And they do. Boy, that's just a really tough way to start that third drive. Yeah, I couldn't quite see who got their hand in there to rip that thing loose, but it was a nice run, and it was uh, well blocked up front by Belfast. We'll get you another look at it here. I think it was 75, no. 55. That is Zach Godet who got his paw in there. And he was kind of, uh, Weatherington was almost by him. He just sort of stuck the hand back out there, and maybe that surprised Weatherington. Belfast, a little snake bit here at the start yeah. of this game. So the Crusaders have just had excellent field position all night. And again, they have it at the Belfast 30-yard line, first and 10, McMahon in motion. They're going to give it right up the middle to Rollins, the fullback, and this time he's not going for two or three yards. He's going to take it all the way in, a 30-yard touchdown run for Rollins. Oh, my. Credit wow. where credit is due. This offensive line for the Doing John Babs Crusaders tonight. is uh, earning their orange slices and maybe yours and my orange slices because they are just making huge holes for these guys to run through. And that's just a fullback dive. Nothing fancy about that one. Up he goes, and now here comes uh, the secret weapon again. 
Mr. Omar to try and put this one through. We have had a bobbled hold tonight. That's the only thing that stopped him. <laughs> that one will go through again. So it's 27 nothing. And if I've done my math right here, Sully, for John Bapps, three scores in a minute 57. Wow. That's a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah, that is uh, some uh, very efficient offensive activity. Well, well, you also think up in Belfast, that last offensive series, they threw the ball three times, stopped the clock every single time. But uh, whew, a rough start for the Lions so far. Well, get caught up on all the local Friday night football action with first and five. That will be Friday night, which is weird to say. I usually say that's tonight, but that is actually tomorrow night on TV5 News. At 11, Connor and Ben bring you all the highlights. In general, do you like Thursday night football? I do. You do, yeah. I do. I think the people who play in Thursday night football don't love it as much as we, the spectators. Although, if you're... If the difference between Thursday and Friday, I think, is a little bit, you know, uh, much more manageable. The big guys who have to play those Thursday night games, I don't think they love it as much as they do not as, as we do. And I think some fans don't like the choice of games that have been on on Thursday night. But, uh, hey, it's an NFL football game. I right? know when the games Everybody's were on, gonna watch it. on CBS on Thursday night, they were mm. spectacular. <laughs> the minute they put those things on other stations, then, you know, now you got to stream them. i got to call my father every week and talk <laughs> right. him what Prime is. It's, it's yeah. a whole thing. How to do, do I log on? What, what's going on? Who's... Who is this Amazon Prime person? <laughs> what channel is that? He's working at Bunny Ears from the 70s. Oh, my goodness. Here's Omar. And again, just kick, boom, to the 10-yard line. Dusso's going to take it. Actually, that's a different uh, returner back there. That is number 11 Anderson on the return. for Belfast. And yeah, that is David yeah, Anderson. Anderson. I wonder if he's if uh, Omar's going to wear out. He's been uh, pretty busy so far in this one. Kickoffs and extra points. So, it, I, I know not to sound like a broken record. It's 27 nothing. You know, you can't uh, lie about what the scoreboard is. Right. A ton of football left here. Oh, sure. And just as quickly as John Vass puts some points on the board, Belfast could do the same thing. It's just a matter of trying to sustain something. Yeah, if you can just get down the field, get one score. You know, one score at a time, right? That's where it's got to start. So, from their own 28-yard line, here's Higgins rolling out to his left. The throw across his body and just didn't have enough boom. I think that was intended for Haas again. By the way, you'll see the John Babs coaches tonight. They're wearing the, the, the autism awareness. This is that weekend. Coach Lippert from Coney uh, started this a few years ago. And a lot of teams across the state, I believe... More than 40 this year are doing it, and John Bapps just happens to be the first one. At some point tonight, we'll get you a good shot of those great T-shirts. There we go, right there. Except love, understand love, autism awareness. Yeah, Coach Lippert uh, leading the charge there. Uh, yeah, more than 40 teams taking part, and of course, with this uh, Thursday night kickoff to the uh, week of action with games uh, tomorrow night, Saturday as well. So many teams taking part in such a, a great cause. Oh, really is. And uh, kudos to Coach Lippert for heading that up. So second down and ten now for the Lions, as they have thrown four straight passes here with the fumble, fumbled carry in between, and we got a flag before the play even starts. Motion penalty on the Lions. That'll back them up five. Ball start against Belfast. Just a miscommunication on what snap we're going on. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, we were talking a little bit about all the things that uh, this university can be and does. And when we got here, you can see, you know, uh, people leaving. There was a, a soccer game. There's just a flurry of activity. You come here, you know, we come up here with the kids and walk around in the summertime. And, you know, it's so nice. But then when school gets back in session, there's just uh, it comes alive. And, and yeah. just, it's so nice to, to be up here uh, on a, you know, a September night. And probably not too many games this year where the starting game time temperature will be in the low 80s. No, I would think we might have the <laughs> this only might, one. This might be the last one. So second and 10, or excuse me, 15 after the penalty. Here's Weatherington. and try to get some of that back. He gets about four of it back off that right side. 
Number 24, Matthew Dusso, the ball carrier. Yeah. Really hard for, you know, for the coaching staff. You've got to keep your, your kids in it, right? You've got to keep your heads in it here because it's really easy to get down, being down 27 in the first quarter. Play, and and uh, Kameen Weatherington, seven. who uh, we've heard a name called a few times. He's who uh, coach calls their speed back, a guy who can uh, be really shifty in the open field and make you miss. And so when you're in a situation like this, you got to get the ball in your playmaker's hands, and that's exactly what Belfast is trying to do with that play. So third and 11 now from the 27-yard line. Higgins, a little play action. Going to throw it down the field and just a little too far in front of his intended receiver. That was Riker Evans down there. He was trying to hit. I like the play. It's executed well. It's just a little miscommunication. Which shoulder am I going over? Comes out of the break just a little bit late. Can't connect. But a good look by, by Belfast there. And I think he really did a nice job with the play action fake to get the Crusaders to bite up on it. But just, uh, again... Game of inches, and that one uh, just misses. So Eli Veya will be back on to punt again. And we've got a flag before he even gets it away. Nice dry run there for everybody involved. That's right. <laughs> Snap, kick, hold, catch. Wilkinson and McMahon were back to receive that kick for the Crusaders, but we're going to do it again. All right, too many men on the field for the Crusaders. So that's going to move the uh, ball up a little bit, which will make the punter happy, right? Get, that extra, get those extra five yards. Hey, and it's now fourth and six. Do you... Actually, yeah. a little tricky. You know, do you decide that maybe we're going to take a chance at this thing and uh, try and catch John Baptist off guard? No, no, they're going to kick it away. Do the safe thing there. So Wilkinson's going to take it at about his own 32, 33 yard line. And good pursuit that time by Belfast. A great tackle over there by, I think that was Haas on the special teams. I believe you're right. Nice open field tackle. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's a Fantastic uh, job of tracking that down, zeroing in on who received that punt, especially after so many had gone to McMahon uh, to be able to zero in on this kid and stop John Baps on the other side of the 50-yard line. Yeah, boy, that's great pursuit by Haas right there. So, John Baps, this might be their worst field position of the night. Actually, I think they had it at the 36 once. <laughs> and this is a team that the way it's gone. has run the ball so efficiently but wants to throw it 10 or 15 times a game. So here's the pitch out to Cashman. Around that right side, he's got plenty of room. And he'll take it out to just about midfield. He's right at the first down marker, really close. And are they going to move them? They are. First they are. Down. Yep. Sometimes when you have a kid who's fast, being on a all-weather surface like this, you just feel faster. You know, you just, it's something about... I feel pretty good standing on it down I there. I do, too, you? and I'm <laughs> far from fast. You know, I, I feel like we maybe no. even sped the open just because I felt, I, I was feeling the, the juice down there. Neither neither one of us would be described as fleet foot. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so another first down for the Crusaders right at midfield, so they'll be right on the Black Bear. Right in the jaws of the black bear. Second and short, just shy of the 50. Oh, they moved. That's that's what they were talking about. They moved it back. So it's actually second down. They had moved the chains. That's what the officials were doing. And the pass is complete to Nathan Butler, and he's off to the races. Oh my goodness, John Babs just piling it on here. That's going to be a 50-yard touchdown pass from Olette to Nathan Butler. Yeah, Butler did a nice job of handling this pass first. So let's look at it one more time. Gets up on his shoulder a little bit, absorbs this contact, and boom, off to the races, makes one kit, uh, one cut to make a, a kid miss, and then it's just all natural speed scampering out into the end zone as uh, 33 and counting for the Crusaders. Well, that's an easy one to figure out. Ball right at the 50. Butler found that room. Nice job by the holder there to 
pull that ball back up. That's Ouellette who actually does the holding, and Omar does the rest. So far, four for five on the extra points tonight, and that makes it 34 nothing. John Babs, and we're not even out of the first quarter. Well, Fan Cam, sponsored by Maine Wood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and DeKel Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. You see the John Babs cheerleaders on the home side here tonight. And some Belfast fans have made the trip up on the other sideline to watch their Lions in action. It's always, it's always, you know, it doesn't, obviously it's not going to look as full, Sully, because it's a big, it's a Division I football stadium, so it's not like your, your high school feels, but, you know, pretty good contingent from the Lions over there. Yeah, absolutely. They get spread out. They're a little spread out, and I would assume that some are sitting on this side of the field as well. Yeah, that's true. Because, you know, it's, I don't know, I, my mother always told me I should never assume, but <laughs> you'd think that uh, there may be some over here. Uh, maybe the Matt guy in the Mac Jones jersey. I don't know what, uh, who's, there you who go. he's rooting for. Or, Who knows? Or why he spent his money on that jersey. Oh, you're about to find out. I know. I thought you're about to find out soon at, enough if that's a good purchase. At what point can we start talking uh, it's your three. Patriots, Dolphins? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Tonight, boy. Well, needless to say, it's been all Crusaders so far. We still have 3-10 to go in this first quarter, folks. And the cheerleaders, I don't know if we can, uh, we're going to show the kickoff here, but they do a jumping jack oh, for every yeah. point oh, scored. Oh, boy, they're they, going to get their workout in the are, heat tonight. Uh, they're going to need some of those orange slices. My goodness. All right, so Belfast returns the kick out to, it seems like that's about where they're starting every single time tonight. That was do so. And he'll take it out to about the 29-yard line, and Belfast will go back on offense, trying to get something started. Just every faction of John Babs' game has been impeccable so far tonight. The one, you know, uh, perhaps blemish on their resume is a muffed snap and kick on the extra point. Yep, uh, extra better point. point it. And that's really the only negative that you can give to this team, so... An impeccable uh, start to uh, this first quarter for the game two for the Crusaders. And, you know, Coach O'Connell, he, he was pretty high on his team still. Even, you know, look, they had the tall tale of starting, or the tall uh, order of starting their season against the two-time defending state champs last week on the road. Yep, you're exactly that, right. That's a tough way to start the season. So, yeah, what was it, 54-6 is the final score, but... Uh, he obviously believes this team's a lot better than that score indicated. Yeah, he said they're not 54-6 to six better than us. He, you had a, much like Belfast said with their six minutes of bad football. Yep. John Babst had uh, some things kind of go awry for them early in that one as well. So Higgins going to try to throw it again. He completes it out there to Fairbrother. First completion of the night for Higgins. And there you go. Just get something started, right? There's just some positive yardage. They get it out to the... 35. It's a six-yard pickup. Andrew Fairbrother, the senior tight end, also plays a little defensive back. Uh, one of uh, many recipients of uh, passes here today. And the kid for Belfast here is, is throwing a nice ball. But they've just missed a couple of times. Yep. And, and we've said it a couple, a couple of occasions here. Just get a little something going. Get a little something cooking. Put some points on the board. Who knows what can happen? Second down and four now after that six-yard pickup. Higgins going to throw it, looking left side. Oh, and it's going to be, oh, boy, that's one. That is one that Hayden Rollins is going to walk back right through the midst. And you can see his frustration right there. That was a pick six. Yeah, I think that caught everybody off guard that uh, that one was going to be there. And that's one where Higgins knows where he wants to go with the ball, and he's made the decision likely before he, okay, in practice, this is always open. He's going to break this off. The last couple times, they didn't jump that route. Slides into the flat and uh, comes up into the passing lane. And a, a disaster avoided there uh, for Belfast. So third and four now for the Lions. Higgins going to throw it out on the left side again. And oh my goodness, bounced right off his receiver. It was intended for Boynton out there. 
it pretty much he, he was kind of he was kind of laying on the turf a little a little bit, but uh, Dustin Boynton just couldn't haul it in. And you got to give the credit to Rollins on that one again because he's not able to break up the pass, but he does get his hands up yep. into the passing lane and undoubtedly obstructing the view of a would-be receiver. And fourth and four is the result. Yeah, it looks like Belfast. Uh, they gonna punt it? Yeah, looks like they're. I thought they might choose to go for it here, just to try to get something going. But uh, yeah, it looks like they're gonna bring. The, right, Coach Fairbrother wants to talk it over. It is that point in the game where. Yep. You know, uh, uh, 34 points, and you got fourth and four. You haven't been this close throughout the game. Something's got to reverse this trend, and uh, maybe you can't take them with you. Might as well call timeout. Yep. Chat about it, and uh, see what we want to do. So Coach Fairbrother in his uh, third season with the Belfast Lions. I, I hope a, a lot of you got to see it last year. Ben Barr did a really nice feature on on Coach. He is a pastor in town, and a lot of these kids uh, look up to him and uh, have said and, and said in that piece, they he sets them straight, and uh, he's been a great role model for his players. He, he's self-admittedly, he told Ben, I am loud and in, in your face. <laughs> and that's what he said. Quote, quote from that. You know, and as a football coach, as long as you know that's what you're getting going in, sure. some kids need that kind of stuff. Yeah. And to come at it from the, the vantage point that he does, as uh, someone who, at his core, just wants the best for you, of course. as a, a, a boy who he wants to turn into a man. You know, you, you take a freshman kid as a 15-year-old, you want to send him out of the world, Four years later is someone who, uh, you know, can be a respectable member of society, and that's really the goal of what Belfast tries to do. So Veyu is going to punt it away again. There's still 204 left in this first quarter. And he's actually, you know, he's, he's boomed it pretty good tonight. McMahon. Taken by McMahon at about the 35-yard line. He's going to head for that sideline again. He makes the turn. Somebody's got to push him out of bounds. He's still on his feet. Only Higgins to beat, and now the punter. And he can't get him. Oh, my goodness. That is just how the night has gone for the Lions. Just nobody could tackle McMahon. And that is a about a 65-yard punt return for a touchdown. So let's just go through this, John. This kid is like a human Corvette. You ramp it up. You're, 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 you know, in fourth, fifth gear here. Let's drop it down. Slow it down. What body control? Let them go by. Second gear, third gear, boom. Crank it back up. Into the end zone you go. Another score. 40 points in the first quarter of this one. Wow. I don't know. You've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing it for a long time. Most points I've ever seen in a first quarter by, yeah, yeah. by one team. Yeah. This is, you know, half. Yes. So Omar back on again to kick or to attempt another extra point. The snap was a little bit behind Ouellette, but uh, he pulled it in nicely and right through again. So it is, you are seeing that score right, folks. It is 41-0, John Babst. My goodness. And at some point, so let's, let's look at this now. So you're on the Belfast sideline. What can coach say to them? How do you keep their heads in this game? What can you say being down 41 nothing, and the first quarter is not over? Yeah, I mean, can't say much aside from it starts with the next drive, the next play. Yep. And, you know, you don't climb a mountain in one step, so you have True. to take that one positive step forward and build on things. And you need to really, at this point, small victories. Hey, we got to go back and watch the tape, and they'll probably, uh, unless this thing turns around, not want to spend too much time on this tape and just put it, you know, in the past. But, you know, two, you know what can we do? It's, it, let's say it's 0-0 zero, zero from this point on. Can we win the game from here on out? Can, what can we take away that are positives from a situation like this? And if you're John Babst, uh, you know, Coach O'Connell said what they dealt with last week was they get a new game, and you mentioned they were against... Yep. Foxcroft, the you know the beast of the east, uh, or you know I guess the, the king, north, kings in the north. I the north, showing my my age there, <laughs> but they just have a, a bad play on a kickoff, and they find themselves with Foxcroft ball at the 12 yard line. Okay, so the ball's at the 12. You got the two-time reigning state champions there trying to punch it in. Takes Foxcroft 
eight plays to put it in, right. and that includes John Baptist jumping offside once on a fourth down to extend the drive. Boom, Foxtrot scores. Okay, turn it around. They don't get anything going. Blown coverage. Foxtrot scores again. You're at Oaks Field. It's a place where they dominate. They always have, have for decades, and they're so good. So you see it get away from you. And he, Coach O said, I could see it my guys. You know, we just we got on the bus and said, we got to put that behind us, and you know, here tonight, John, 41 points later, it looks like that uh, loss is a, a distant memory. So Omar is going to kick it off again. As he's getting a workout tonight. That leg's getting a workout. <laughs> Taken by Evans at about the 14 or 15 yard line. Evans, nice return up the middle. So there you go. There's a nice positive play as he takes it out to about the 37, 38 yard line. By far and away, their best uh, field position to start so far on this uh, Thursday evening. So Belfast will go back on offense. 128 to go. You know, this is this is also tough on John Baps too, Sully. It's like, okay, we just came off that big loss. We want to come in here and run some plays and, and work on some things, but you don't want to run the score up either on purpose, but you can't just stop playing either. It's a tough spot to be in for that team that's got the 41 points. And I think there's a certain point where that is the case. And moving forward, I'm sure that we'll see a little less, uh, but you do, you know, same as them, things you want to work on, yep. things, you know, uh, with games within the game, you know, your job, do your job, you know, I know you don't like right. that saying, but <laughs> do your job, don't worry about the other guys, such a patriot saying. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll stop with that. Higgins now, in the shotgun, from their own 38-yard line, good field, field position for the Lions, it's got value in motion. Going to give it to Weatherington, but there's a flag. And, boy, that sure looked like that might be a motion penalty. We'll yeah. see. I couldn't tell if they didn't have enough men on the line or if they had two people in motion at once. But either way, the minute somebody was, uh, you know what, it, I think it was motion because you can't have somebody in motion when the ball is being snapped. Bill Patterson, our referee tonight. Need a captain. So he's talking to the Crusaders. Kudos to our crew there. Yep, they're going to decline it. Nice job picking up the audio from the sideline. Belfast. Kelly has declined. Play goes for eight of one. Second and nine. So with, at the you know, that's, I kind of like John Baps doing that. You know, look, kept 41 to nothing. Decline the penalty. Don't back them up. They get, they got one yard on that carry. Second and nine. And a little different look for Belfast on that one. They go uh, three wide receivers to the, you know, the left side of the field, the or close side on on the screen as you're watching from home and brings people in motion. Just trying a couple different looks. You mentioned what are we working on? Got to, you know, do what we do. Just try and get a little positivity going. Well, we don't get this play off before we have some whistles. I don't see a flag. It's in the defensive backfield. There is one. Oh, there it is. Way back there. So. So you, you see what, uh, or heard what uh, the referee said there, that, that perhaps doesn't get a choice on that one. That's automatic. So they will back Belfast up five yards, back to the 34, and that's going to bring up second and 14. So just about everything that could have gone wrong for Belfast tonight has. Second and 14 from their own 34, going to go back to the run game. It's Weatherington, nice carry, picks up six to about the 40. And that's been there a couple times. Sure has. Belfast hasn't been able to find themselves in, you know, positive plays on first down, positive play on second down. Get yourself into a third and short. And Kameen Weatherington, who we've said a couple times, he's a fast kid. He is. Get him an open field, just breaks one tackle, and, and a nice job there by John Babs to wrap him up, take him down. Yeah, got that in on that tackle to pull him down. So that's going to bring up third down and eight for the Lions, and you wonder at some point, too, you know, the quarter's going to run out here. Quarter's going to run out here before they get a playoff, so that's going to do it for the first quarter. You can see it on the screen. All John Baps, 41-0 over Belfast. We're back after this. We get up and go, no matter what day it is. We make sure nothing keeps us from doing what needs to be done, because we're driven by what we love. 
Milwaukee's outdoor power equipment handles any job, big or small, from trimmers, blowers, and mowers to chain and pole saws. Milwaukee's battery-operated high-output tools will help get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. Hi, I'm Mike Ford in the Ford & Stone Furnishings in Winslow. We've been in business since the 1940s. My mom and dad gave us a solid foundation built on respect and fairness to everyone who came through our doors. We've worked hard down through the generations to earn and keep your family's trust. And we're committed to continuing our exceptional customer service. These are just some of the things that got us to where we are today, and we hope they will bring you here too. I promise it'll be worth the trip. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. Third and eight for Belfast, and boy, that ball popped around there, and uh, a couple of Crusaders had a chance at it, but it falls harmlessly to the turf. Yeah, that's a spicy one right there. That ball kicks up into the air, and it's kind of a collective breath holding for everybody uh, in the Belfast region. Intended for Haas and uh, Butler for John Babs probably had the best crack at that. So we begin the second quarter with another punt from the Lions. They have just struggled all night to try to find any offensive rhythm. And there's a punt that takes a great Belfast roll. And rolls all the way down to the 24-yard line. And that might be the worst field position of the night for the Crusaders. Yeah, the uh, kid from Belfast jumped on it, making me think that uh, maybe someone from John Babs touched it. But no, John Babs to... Uh, Ball going the other way here. And you look uh, at both teams here, Class D football, both have pretty good numbers. Coach O'Connell said they've got 39 out for the team this year. Had a couple of kids hop on board after the uh, start of school. Belfast called a timeout here, sort of a strange spot there, 21 seconds into the quarter. Can't take him with you. You can't, that's true. Continue. Most... Uh, kids Coach O'Connell's ever had out for the team, 42. So, I mean, at a time when schools are struggling with numbers and a Class D football game, to see this number of kids out there on the field is uh, commendable for both, uh, for both crews. We want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to bring you this game. Please let them know that you appreciate it as well. And you see them right there. That was something uh, Coach Fairbrother talked about with us as well. That, uh, you know, you drop down to D, a little bit of a different look for Belfast. But uh, the bottom line is you've got enough kids, you can still play 11-man football. And, and, you know, that's important to them, and they can still do that. That's what is the story of high school football at the moment, in, in yeah. my opinion, is you got to be fluid. you got to be willing to adjust and make do with the situation you're presented with. You know, there. I think there are some things that we'll try and figure out year in and year out, but at the end of the day, you just want to get kids out there playing the game. So perhaps that is why they called the timeout, because the kid from John Babs did touch the ball okay. on the punt, and that's why Belfast that's, jumped on it. I wondered why he was uh, so amorous to take really, over that day. There really was no indication, was there? So you, you were on it, Sully. So it is Belfast football right, at the John Babs 29. There really wasn't much made of it. Right. I think what happened is the gunner for John Babs, one of the blockers, was going down there, and I don't think he even realized that the football it was still touched him, down but there. a heady play by Belfast to see that that was uh, what had occurred, jumped on it, and uh, yeah, you're right. I didn't see any big signal that no. pointed in this direction for Belfast, but it is their ball. So that's huge for the Lions, a huge break for them as they have the ball inside Crusaders territory, but there the high snap goes over a new quarterback in the game for Belfast. That's Luke Littlefield, or at least he took the snap as Higgins is out there too. 
and it was just a bit too high, and boy, that goes all the way back to the 37-yard line. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. My goodness. Just a tough one. Kid hadn't taken the shotgun snap yet tonight. It's hot. Probably a little sweaty, and uh, ball just uh, skips through his hands. That's about a 13-yard loss all the way back to the 37. They've got to get to the 14. So it is third down and a lot. So now the play call, he asked, how far can you throw it? Yeah. Let's give it a heave. Give this thing a go. Belfast backed up. Littlefield going to keep it himself. Spins inside and he pushes it to the 30, but well short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Lions. Put a positive play in. Feels the pressure. Kid who's just come into the game. Moves in the pocket well. Gets a handle of it. Up and in. Hey, positive yardage. So you wonder here, you know, fourth down, you deep in, you might as well go for it, right? Oh, absolutely. What do you like? What do you got? What, what You know, you go through the playbook. You don't have a ton that's going to be for a 20-yard game, but you've got a couple things that you like, and he's fourth and 15. Find somewhere where you've got single coverage on the outside and let one of your playmakers try and go up there and grab something. All right, so from the 29-yard line, fourth and 15, let's see if the Lions can convert. We've played three minutes of the second quarter, all Crusaders tonight so far. Higgins, back at quarterback, going to heave it downfield, just hoping for something big. And oh my goodness, did Haas catch that? He did indeed. He did. Huge play for the Lions, and there you go. That gets a, a little bit of uh, energy into the Belfast squad. A 29-yard touchdown pass from Higgins to the tight end, Andrew Haas. Watch as Haas just runs under this thing. Higgins back in there, little pump fake. Up it goes, runs under it. Just a little taller than everybody else. I tell you, Wilkinson came coming across there, had great coverage, and somehow that ball got to us. Just dropped it in, put it in the bucket. Well, if you're looking for something positive, Belfast, you, you got it right there. That's a great play. They've been just missing uh, on the passing game so far in this one, so perhaps you get a little something cooking. So Belfast is going to go for two. Higgins keeps it, going to run for that corner. I think he's going to get there. He made it. So 41-8, Belfast is on the board. Well, fan cam tonight, sponsored by Maine Wood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and DeKalb Floor Supply. They're on Main Street in Winterport. Belfast fans just trying to tell. trying to get back half in a little half, bit. Half of those Belfast fans, <laughs> half of those John Babs fans, and then there is just a, a portion of the stands dividing them. Hopefully, it's not like the Jets and the Sharks and they uh, have a dance fight over there. Well, Although, I'd be here for that. There you go. I would, too. So, you know, it's been a rough night for the Belfast passing game. They put the ball in the air 11 times. Only two completions, but that's a big one right there. 29-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, right back in business. And, uh, you know, stick with it. John Babs blinks. Got to start Makes one little right. mistake. And all of a sudden, what was 41 is now 33. I just heard Coach O'Connell, if you caught that on the mics, telling his kids to be aggressive. They're pretty aggressive on that. That was close to double coverage there. The safety got over there pretty quickly. It just cost. Yeah, he's tall. He went up and got it. Exactly. And this is a, a team. They threw the ball 25 times last time out. They're, they're, they're efficient. They're, they're proficient in the passing so game. Just a nice play. I, don't, I wouldn't even classify that as bad defense. I think it's just really good offense by Bill Vest. Yep. So Elias Higgins with the kicking duties tonight is going to kick it off here. 41-8 now the Crusader is on top. 8.47 to go in the first half. Gaudet uh, getting out there. They were a man short. John Batch, that is. Got a couple of guests coming up for you at halftime. Hope you stay tuned for that. We're gonna, oh, went for the little onside kick there. Why not, right? And Gaudet, who just ran it on the field, comes right at him, and he's got it. Opportunity hands. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos to Belfast for trying something right there. Absolutely. Hey, that guy just came on. He's probably out of breath. Let's put, it right, put it right in his gut. <laughs> well, 
just kind of stuck too. Look at this. Good oh, job by Zeph. Got that. Guys that are number 55 don't catch like that. Nope. On the knees. Got it. Wraps it up with two har two arms. Good play. I was uh, when I was a, a younger man. I I was on the front line of the kickoff return. And I got one kick to me once, and I was hit so hard that I uh, never wanted it to happen again. So Olet going to hand it to McMahon, who has just been phenomenal tonight. And I'm going to tell you, had him down for three carries for 82 yards. Jackson That time, he got about what, six, seven. That'll lower the average. <laughs> that, well, six. We'll give him six. And that takes the average down a little bit. He's also got the punt return for the touchdown, too. So Mr. McMahon has been... Uh, pretty good tonight, needless to say. <laughs> so second down and four. I think that's your fullback, right? Rollins just pushing that left side. He does that really well. He's already had a big run tonight, too, but uh, that time it's a first down. He takes it down inside the 45-yard line to the 43. Just simple. They've been running that play since football was invented, right? You know, back before when they were wearing leather pads and leather helmets and no helmets at all. That one's been around for a long time. Yep. Well, he needed four. He got five. So down to the 43-yard line. It's another first down for the Crusaders. They've got the big lead. Keeping it on the ground. Cashman this time trying to pick his way around that right side. Almost tripped up by Fairbrother. But he barrels down inside the 30-yard line. He's tackled from behind. And uh, that kind of pushed him ahead as it was Jeremiah Cole with the tackle for Belfast. Kind of pushed Cashman ahead a little bit. Yeah, Cashman shifty in the open yeah. field. Does a nice job of getting in space and exploiting it. And then a nice job here. Belfast coming up in pursuit, trying what they can, as, with all their might, to try and knock that thing loose, which when you are trying to do that, make a cutback like that, easy to cough it up, but it does a nice job of uh, hanging on to the ball. 15-yard pickup down to the 29. Now they go right up the gut. We've got a few other players in there now for John Bapps, so let's see who gets up from that pile. Number 45, Jacob Warren, the sophomore running back Jacob with that Warren, carry. And if you're John Baptist, you do want to respond to the score, but this is also an invaluable opportunity for really both teams because sure. you do want to get some of those other kids some looks. And so Jacob Warren gets a carry in the second quarter of a game at the University of Maine. You know, you can't sure. duplicate that in practice. And he's getting another carry here, but oh my goodness, good job by the Belfast defense that time. That was Luke Littlefield that stacked him right up on a... Second down and three carry. Littlefield was just pretty much standing up and met Warren right at the line of scrimmage. No game. A situation that we haven't found uh, Belfast and John Babson in much with the Crusaders here forced by that play into a third down. It's third and three from the 22-yard line for the Crusaders. As they are, and you can tell, they're being a little bit more deliberate right now. Up 41 to 8. Will we see a field goal attempt if they don't get this? See that leg. And oh, what a tackle in the backfield by Belfast. That was Teddy Dyer. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler in the backfield. Makes big plays. <laughs> and Teddy Dyer brought him down. Loss. And so now what do you do? Uh, a great play out there in the open field. Yeah. You that loss because you go from being in, you know, fourth and, and, and four. Now you're fourth and essentially nine. Fourth, late, fourth and ten from the 29. So you can have a kid kick a 46-yarder. We've been talking up. I want to see, see the attempt. Yeah, he was making them in <laughs> I want to see it. the pregame. But, you know, that's... a. A roll of the dice. If I'm John, if I'm if I'm uh, Dan, I might take time out here, talk this thing over, and uh, let's get in the, the the call we want to call. Are you wondering? Are they going to are they going to take a delay a game and punt maybe, it? Maybe punt it. I don't know. They're letting the clock wind down. That's for sure. Nobody's in a hurry. Yeah, the ball. Uh, it was a six-yard loss. Seven-yard loss, actually. Back to the 
And I see no, six yards. Lost back to 28. Honest Omar out there working the leg. So is he going to? Uh, he might get a crack at this thing. Maybe they'll call it. He's got that. Dan's going to call timeout. So, huh? Let's see here. Hey, you, this is this is the time to try it, right? We'll take a break. Come back after this. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. The better way to a better All right, here we go. 45-yard field goal attempt. He made and that. <laughs> he knocked that thing through. Look at it him. Good. <laughs> Look at All that. All right, so, you know, we, we've, we've sold him pretty well tonight, right? Look at this. He's got the leg. Hey, this is going to just sneak wow. over the pylon. Oh, my goodness. 45-yard field goal. You don't see many of those in high school football, do you? No, you certainly do not. <laughs> what a kick. That's amazing. I wonder if Coach Jordan Stevens is here, seeing this kid <laughs> in action. <laughs> Jeez. Well, 44-8 now. You know, you've said it a couple times tonight, Sully, and I don't want to be repetitive, but my goodness, what a weapon to have. What a weapon. In a close game? In addition, you've got the timeout. You call the timeout. Nope. You don't have to shuttle the field nope. goal team out nope. there in a hurry and try and do it all in 30 seconds. Call the timeout. Let him get his bearings. Get set up. Because one thing about kickers is they're, you know, particular about the way that they they're want things. Different. Different. So exactly. Goalies, right. kickers, kickers, yeah. right? All, all, they live a life of solitude, <laughs> you know? Nobody wants to throw. It's like a pitcher on a, on a perfect game, a, 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 you know, a no-hitter. You don't talk to him. You don't want to mess him up. Spends all the time in practice with two other people, the holder and the punter. Well, now yeah, we'll see how this kickoff is. Maybe he's a little, he's a little tired after that. Out. <laughs> or maybe he'll kick it into the end zone. Let's see what happens. My goodness. Got to be happy for him. And that's the perfect opportunity. You're up 41 to 8. You can take the time out. It worked out really well for the Crusaders. Yeah, no, he's still, he's still doing all right. I think it's a laser beat. That's a laser. Do so with it. That's a good return. You know, he, he is. Do so and Evans have been bringing. Bringing the ball right up to the 30-yard line, close to it every single time, and he's, you know, he's kicking it deep. I think you're going to see like a heat trail off of this thing as he kicks it. Look at it, low and hard. It's a drive off the tee. He's got two hands to think about in the whole future to get in front of that thing. My goodness, my goodness. If he doesn't catch it, it probably ends up in Ulton. First reference of the night where you say. You know, usually it's third and easy. You know, I. I you know. <laughs> so you you do it tonight. Yeah. Beat you to it. Let's see, is that right? Is I'm trying to think where we are. Is Old Town? Yeah, Old Town's that way. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I guess you'd be going the other way. You're like what? Past the dump keg? You're... Okay, we're really getting down the weeds. We're getting in the weeds. We're now. really getting. I think our I think our guy with the hyperbolic is right next to Coach O'Connell. <laughs> yeah. Will Cashman, where are you? Coach O'Connell would like to speak with you. Here's Higgins going to keep it right up the middle. A nice gain out over the 40-yard line. Should be a first down for the Lions. Great look. Catch him off guard. Fantastic pickup by Belfast on first down. Haven't seen that a lot. 11 yards. He's a kick. He's a... And low. Got a heck of an arm. Yeah. And uh, can do some things with his legs as well. Well, Coach Fairbrother was, you know, very high on him, had great, great things to say about him. You know, it's a second-year starter, says he works really hard. He's got a good arm, and he's improving every day. He just keeps improving. 
So a first and ten for Belfast. As they'll hand it off in the backfield to Teddy Dyer. He's the guy between the tackles, right? And he's running, he's running right between the tackles before he's brought down by a couple of Crusaders. I think Rollins is in there, a few others. Second carry of the night for Dyer. And boy, that was a lot of work to get two yards, right? Narrowly uh, avoiding disaster there as uh, Crusader came gunning through the uh, front line. Well timed blitz. Able to get that off. So second down at eight. Gain of two out to the 43-yard line. Under three minutes now to go in this first half. That has been all Crusaders. And you can't, you know, you mentioned Higgins as a second-year starter. Just having that time under your belt, being out there, that you can't teach that, you can't coach that. It only comes with actual time on the field in these situations. Now here's Littlefield at quarterback, and they hand it off to Higgins. So Coach Fairbrother... Switching it up here a little bit as Higgins will take the handoff in the backfield from Littlefield, and he's going to get another first down. Well, you know, you figure just what he's able to do is such a big kid. Let's put him in a spot where we can get him some block. He doesn't have to take the snap. Kid at Pukumplu is playing quarterback. He can do a nice job. Luke Littlefield has shown that he's perfectly hand, uh, able to handle the situation. So a little wrinkle, perhaps something yeah. John Baptist wasn't ready for. So Higgins, a couple of carries here, 11 yards and 12 yards, another first down for the Lions, and they're on the move down to the 45-yard line. And it is Littlefield under center, and Higgins is in that tailback spot along with Bayou in the fullback spot, and they go right back to Higgins, and this time... John Baps is ready for it. A couple of purple jerseys there, including Goddad. We've, we've called his name a lot tonight. Number 55, Zach Goddad, sophomore. Sure, too, again, yeah, Goddad is uh, one of uh, many kids uh, on this team that uh, play a little offense, play a little defense, and he is uh, doing a fantastic job tonight. Also, he's the holder. He's, uh, you know, Mr. Omar's uh, best buddy out there. So no gain on that play. Second down and 10 from the 45-yard line. Under a minute and a half now to play in this first half. 44-8. John Baps on top of Belfast. Class D matchup on a Thursday night at UMaine. Littlefield's going to throw it down the field. He's got a man open if the ball gets there. And it just hung up a little bit. Intended for Haas, but boy... Nice job by number 40 for John Baptist. Thomas Curtis got a hand on it. It hung up just a little bit, Sully. Yeah, you're exactly right. Just a, a little bit of a wobble to that throw. You feel like if he just gets a little bit more into it, a spiral. The guy, His man does have a step, but uh, allows the defender to gain some ground and knock that thing away. So that brings up third down and 10 from the 45. Clock stops at 111. Well, he had him. He was open. But a nice job by Curtis to close that gap and knock it away. And now you've got Higgins, it seems like, taking the play. So maybe I'm going to guess he's going to take back over at quarterback on this play, at least based on how he's coming from the sideline. Yep, I think you're right. And I think Coach Fairbrother just trying to throw a few things at the Crusaders and see if they can find something here, right? So third down and ten. Tried to draw the Crusaders off, and he might have. He might have. Take those five yards. Yep. Bring up a third and five. Pull a little Aaron Rodgers there. Finley marker down. And they'll move it up to the 40. So it'll be John Babs. Third down and five. I think that's going to work out. Aaron Rodgers in New York. Third down and five. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. I can see it going both ways. Saw his house. I was in New Jersey last week. Drove by his house. Pretty nice pad. I'm sure it was. <laughs> Pretty nice pad. Just to throw that out there for no reason. Third and five from the 40. Higgins going to throw it down that sideline and not really in a spot where it could be caught by Fairbrother. So it falls incomplete. Pass intended for Fairbrother falls incomplete. Fourth down and five. So bring up fourth down and five. And you got to think the Lions are going to go for it here. Yeah, had some time to throw. Just uh, overthrows his would be receiver. And double coverage there on Fairbrother as well. Malcolm Butler and another Crusader right on him. So the Lions trying to keep this drive going as the first half winds down. The ball will be at the 40. It's a fourth down and five. And a high snap. 
And oh my goodness, just the kind of night it's been. And boy, just fall on it at this point, right all the way down to the 30 yard line. My goodness, you just feel bad for the Lions. That's just sort of the night it's the way it's gone. And a turnover on down. It's 44 8. John Baps, we're back after this. In the beautiful town of Belfast, you'll discover a world of alpaca, the blue alpaca. At our ranch location, you can interact with these amazing animals and enjoy the beautiful Maine outdoors with your very own alpaca walk. Visit our website to book your alpaca walk and experience all the joy and beauty that comes with it. Shop at our downtown Belfast location or online and take advantage of our free nationwide shipping. You'll be ready for a comfortable, fashionable, and fun summer. The blue alpaca. Feel the difference. Belfast Lions football on WAVI is sponsored by Solar Logics, your beneficial electrification experts, increasing Maine's energy independence by reducing the need for fossil fuel produced energy. Catwalk, fashionable clothing and accessories for girls and women, located in the heart of Belfast, and Vinolio, where you'll find the freshest olive oils, balsamic vinegars, wines, craft beers, cheeses, and Italian delicacies. Come taste the world on Main Street in Belfast. Welcome back to Morse Field at Alphonse Stadium. 55 seconds left in the first half of this one. All John Baps tonight. And they've got the ball back now, Sully. A 30-yard loss on that high snap that Higgins just could, just way too high. He couldn't pull that down. Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, just another tough break for the Belfast Lions. And now uh, puts uh, John Baps back in business here. We'll show it to you one more time. Nothing you can do about that. Tries to scoop it up, tries to make a play, and kicks it around. Eventually, as you said, just, just fall on it and keep John Baps from getting another score. Should mention at halftime, we got a couple of guests from John Baps going to join us. We've got uh, Dave Armstead and Jason O'Reilly, the head of school, and uh, the academic dean, going to talk a little uh, Crusader action. I wonder how school was. We had a lot of places very hot today yeah, with goodness. all that weather. I wonder how, how schools they uh, went home early. That. It was so hot. So first and 10 from the 30, and we got a new quarterback. Jack Guinness is under center here as we wind down the first half. As John Baps will, Coach O'Connell, classy, obviously, will uh, pump the brakes here a little bit, up 44 8. Five yard penalty brings the ball back. Five yard penalty takes the ball back to the 35 yard line. First down and 15. We appreciate all of the. Uh, Sites that we visit, of course, John Baps, as you may talk about a little bit, they're nomadic. They play at a lot of different fields, but this is, they are the home team here, and we like to chat with the home team wherever we go, someone from the home team. 54 seconds to go now in the half. It's a first and 15. The run right up the middle. Got it back to the line of scrimmage and plus one. And, you know, you mentioned you don't want to be classy. You don't want to run it up but these kids are getting their first bite at the apple yeah so exactly. hey come on baby i gotta get mine yeah that was so, yeah that was ian fader who came into the game nice run seven yard pickup there down to the 29 yard line 44 points i gotta wet my beak a little bit <laughs> i, I want to get a couple of those so second down and nine for the crusaders it's pretty much all subs in there now and that looks like that's fader again this time only a, a couple of yards. Nice uh, stop there by Jackson Falkingham for the Lions. And you would think the Jackson Crusaders will let this run out, and they will. As uh, you see Coach O'Connell saying, come off the field. And that is going to do it for the first half of play here at UMaine, Sully. And uh, I, I don't know what you say, just an impressive, impressive first half by the Crusaders. Yeah, pretty much all Crusader all the time, save for one really nice play by Belfast. Uh, John Baps led by the work of, I would say, a couple people, but Logan McMahon comes to mind, just able to do things defensively, offensively, special teams impeccable, sprinkle in a 46-yard <laughs> field goal, and you got yourself 44 points in the first half of football. Yeah, we saw a little bit of everything there, didn't we? As uh, both teams here at UMaine will head to uh, each of the end zones, and that's where they'll meet for for halftime. And uh, if you're John Baps, if you're Coach O'Connell, you're you're pretty happy as you see a couple of players there <laughs> grouping along to the band. And if you're the Lions and uh, Coach Fairbrother, you've got some work to do in that second half. So we will go to the break at the half. It is John Baps 44, Belfast 8. We'll come back with our halftime report with some special guests right after this. 
Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. Why do folks travel for miles to shop at Fortin's Home Furnishings in Winslow? Selection, 24,000 square feet filled with products for every room in your home. Quality, we carry famous name brands that you know and trust. And price, you'll always get the best value when you shop at Fortin's. It's all under one roof at Fortin's Home Furnishings. And remember, the best deals are at Fortin's Home Furnishings in Winslow on the corner of the Carter Memorial Bridge. Cross over the bridge to Fortin's. Room to room, we got it all. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. We get up and go, no matter what day it is. We make sure nothing keeps us from doing what needs to be done. Because we're driven by what we love. Milwaukee's outdoor power equipment handles any job, big or small. From trimmers, blowers, and mowers to chain and pole saws, Milwaukee's battery-operated high-output tools will help get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. Am I going to lose a child because of this? They're real people, real problems. The all-new Investigate TV Plus is all about real solutions. So how will this help keep your family safe? In-depth reports that reveal all sides. Stories that impact you. A team who gets to the truth. Real people, real problems, real life solutions. Watch Investigate TV Plus weekdays this September on WABI. Even on Saturdays and Sundays, you have a lot to get up to. Start your day with us on WABI TV 5. Catch up on the local news that matters to you, get sports scores and highlights. And know before you go with your updated first alert weather forecast. Today is looking great for outdoor activities, but we may see a few rain showers moving in overnight. Join us every Saturday and Sunday morning for your local news on WBI TV5. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay, and fall colors are spreading, especially orange, the color of Luke. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes just like yours. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. Welcome back at the half. Our halftime report is sponsored by Coastal Auto Parts, owned and operated by a main family that cares. That's Coastal Auto Parts, 44 to 8. John Babst uh, with the lead over Belfast. Uh, Brian Sullivan here joined alongside uh, Dave Armstead and Jason O'Reilly, the uh, head of schools and the academic dean uh, for the John Babs Crusaders. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, both uh, for being here. Uh, Dave, we'll start with you. Yeah. Back to school. Oh, a little yeah. bit warm at school, I'm sure, but still nice to be there. Pretty toasty. Yeah, I definitely could stand to be like 15 degrees cooler, but um, it was. It felt great to have the kids back. It felt great to see teachers in action. We started last week, so this is our, I think it's our seventh or eighth day of yep. school today. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to the temperatures dropping next week. 95-year-old building, you know, it's like an old brick oven, you know. <laughs> Don't have a heat pump in there quite yet. Not yet, no. Nope. Uh, Jason, and for you, uh, it's nice to get back, and especially uh, to, get, to be among the kids. And, and up here, we mentioned it a little bit earlier in the broadcast, this is something that you as a, a John Baptist baseball coach as well, yep. and, and your football team knows very well, is that you got to take the show on the road, whether you're home or away. Correct. 
it's um, it's a blessing and a curse. The, we, our kids get to play on the nicest facilities around. Um, we don't control them, um, but it is a nice benefit for us to, to play here and at Hudson and Cameron and the Cross Center. Um, the, the, the bad part of it is uh, bad part of that is the other teams are all excited to come play in those facilities too. So they they tend to bring their best games to, to us, which is okay. It's, it's good competitive uh, fun. You've got uh, with your football team. You've got uh, Coach O'Connell here. Yep. He is been around and does such a good job for, for so long, and, and you know very well because uh, when your son was younger, he was a member of that 08 uh, championship team yeah, that we son, all remember I, so well. My son Tim played for Coach O, and, and um, Coach likes to tell a story that Tim kind of had, a, my son Tim kind of had a turnaround in that season, and um, Coach says Tim made the difference. Now he's talking to the dad of the kid, so, you know, <laughs> a grain of salt and all that, but... Um, uh, remember it well. That that championship game was one of the coldest nights I've ever had uh, down in Portland. But boy, was it exciting! And Jason, for you, coaching up the baseball team, I'm sure a lot of your kids are out there on the field tonight. They are. They are. It's um, one of the neat parts about our school is that our kids are so involved, and it's it's um, not uncommon to see three sport athletes who are also in extracurricular clubs and keep themselves pretty involved. So it's fun to step into a different arena like this and see them with a different coach and a different field doing, doing something different. And mentioning different arenas, what else do you guys have going on at the school? I'm sure there's a, a plethora of things, but... Uh, oh, heck yes. Yeah, we, um, we just won a soccer match tonight. We, we did? Yeah, we had a... Um, Nice victory in soccer. We we just uh, did uh, tryouts for the fall play. Um, what's Mur the what's the play this year? I think it's it's murder in the air, H E I R, or murders yep. in the air. Um, so it's uh, that's going to be out in um, usually the first week of November. November. I think is when the yep. play when the play comes out. So we're doing that. We have a club fair next week. We like to have we like to set aside a day where we bring all the clubs down into the auditorium and give the kids time to come and see where all the clubs are and sign up and we are, we're also bringing in our student center is bringing in some food trucks so we'll have food trucks for lunch we'll have club fair and it'll be it, we work really hard because we have kids from 30 different towns and 10 or 12 different countries so uh, building community is a is a um, top priority for us constantly so things like that things like getting people out to the games all of that is part of stitching together a really strong student body and a uh, good community hey jason as the uh, academic dean being uh, in charge of a school it's a melting pot like that it is. these yeah. first couple weeks must be very interesting as you try to get people to acclimate maybe some pre-existing oh you're from vz i don't like people from vz you're from orrington things like that you know it's just uh, probably kind of interesting in a, in a spot for you it is actually next friday we have a, a ninth grade experience where we do community building the upperclassmen are, are gone for the day and we focus just on the ninth graders and and building those stitches um, that are that are different than the ones they came from. We have some kids that are the only kid from their middle school, and we have kids who come from ten or you know with ten or twelve other classmates from the school. So we're we're trying to we got 145 ninth graders that we're trying to to blend together into one group, uh, one class. So it's an intentional part of what we do, but it's a good part. And we like we like that challenge. One thing I've always noticed about uh, the John Baptist uh, uh, school, and, and I think a lot of people out there, really any football community, really relying on the boosters and sure. the people who support you and supporting what you do and helping with events like this. And I know John Baptist, and I see this lovely John Baptist baseball shirt and a nice polo. Yep. A lot of that probably comes from the work the boosters do. It definitely does. I was... Um I have seven kids. I brought four of them to the game tonight, and that was dinner. <laughs> so I went down there, and, and uh, it was pretty awesome because I'm sitting in those stands, and you can smell the grill. So the kids are getting hungry. I went down and got a, a, a ton of food for them. But I was so grateful for all the parent support that we have in all the different ways. We have fine arts boosters. We have sports boosters. There's, there's just a ton of community spirit at the school. And, Jason, as the landscape of high school football changes, continuing to play 11-man football, having 39 kids out for the team. What do you think that spe says about the, the John Baptist football tradition? I, I think Dan does and, and his staff do a really nice job of, of bringing kids in. Um, and you, you look at the kids that are out there, there are some first-time um, football players who are on the, on the sidelines. We have um, 
Giannis, who kicked the, the field goal, is um, you know from Kazakhstan, and um, you know spent some time in another school in America before coming to us. I mean, he's become part of the, a big part of this community, uh, just like all those kids down there. I um, mean, Dan does a really nice job of pulling kids who might be on the fence or want to try something new. Um, we have a student from Ukraine who hasn't played football before, is is decided he wanted to play, and he's out on the sideline tonight. And and um, it's a, it's a good. Um, Dan does a good job of recognizing what our mission is, um, being student-centered, and getting kids involved. And being up 44-8 to eight at halftime, Certainly not helps. a bad flyer <laughs> for somebody who might want to join the football team. Any parting sure. thoughts before I let you guys get back to, uh, you know, those kids and maybe some of those nice uh, booster-made snacks? Um, just so grateful to have... Um, kind of be back to normal after a couple of weird years you know and last year was kind of a normal year but it just feels great to be back at school this fall all right anything you I'm, I'm ready to go see the second half there you go all right and same thing here a half time report brought to you or sponsored by coastal auto parts owned and operated by a main family that cares 44 to 8 john Baptist with the lead second half coming your way right after this Live coverage of high school football on WABI TV5 is sponsored by Coastal Auto Parts, owned and operated by a main family that cares. Hammond Lumber Company, a fourth generation family business serving contractors, homeowners, and do it yourselfers with building supplies and special services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Maine Wood Floors, buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and DeKal Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. Next Home Experience, find your next home and get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. And by Renewal by Anderson, a better way to a better window. Set up your free consultation today. This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rowley's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. When you have flooring you love, it's not a chore to clean them. It's just fun. Buy from the best, forget the rest with Don DeKell Mainwood Floors. I feel good. Belfast Lions football on WAVI is sponsored by Solar Logics, your beneficial electrification experts, increasing Maine's energy independence by reducing the need for fossil fuel produced energy. Catwalk, fashionable clothing and accessories for girls and women, located in the heart of Belfast, and Vinolio, where you'll find the freshest olive oils, balsamic vinegars, wines, craft beers, cheeses, and Italian delicacies. Come taste the world on Main Street in Belfast. WABI says thanks for watching with It's Our Treat, where we pick up part of your tab. It's Our Treat is the fun, easy way to support the local economy and save money yourself. Featuring specially discounted offers from locally owned and operated restaurants and entertainment venues throughout eastern and central Maine. Visit WABI.TV and click on It's Our Treat to see all of our current offers. Buy Maine first and save with It's Our Treat from WABI TV 5. Welcome back to Morris Field at Harold Alphonse Sports Complex. The stadium up here at the University of Maine is where John Baps is playing its home game tonight. And Crusader fans are happy as it's been all John Baps, 44 to 8 over Belfast tonight. And everything has just gone their way. As Sully mentioned before, we went to break at the halftime. At halftime, um, offense, defense, special teams, uh, the field goal unit, you name it. And uh, we'll, we'll show you one replay. Speaking of special teams, on that. In that first half, this was the uh, Logan McMahon punt return for a touchdown. Yeah, Logan McMahon has just been so good in this one, and, and I just think this shows what a great athlete can do. Look at the body control to slow down, allow that defense that's pursuing to go by him, reverse field, and untouched uh, for a touchdown. One of a couple that he put on the board for John Baps in that first half. 
Yeah, he hasn't touched the football too much. He had four carries for 88 yards, including a 42-yard touchdown run on top of that punt return. And for Belfast, boy, it took him until uh, late or at middle of the second quarter before they finally got something going, and they got their first touchdown where Elias Higgins finally uh, got something going when they got that punt that was touched by a, a Crusader, and Belfast got a little bit of a break there, and uh, they had good field position, and uh, he was able to uh, throw a 29-yard touchdown pass to Haas in the, cor in the corner of that uh, in the corner of that end zone. We're going to see that right here. Yeah, and if you're wondering how they got those eight points, this is uh, a nice throw by Higgins. Just Let's his receiver run under it. Let your playmakers make plays, and that's exactly what happens here. Good defense by John Babb, but just defense. a strong, sure set of hands to score six and get the two-point conversion that would follow. So that was the only score for Belfast in the first half. That made it 41-8. to eight. And uh, then John Babs, after scoring 41 points in that first quarter, they did take the foot off the gas a little bit. They only had one score in that second quarter and it was an impressive one that came on, on the special teams unit too as uh, they called the timeout it was after a loss on, on a play and they went for the 45 yard field goal with Omar Sully yeah called the timeout and uh, look at this thing <laughs> I mean John how many games Just. have you watched up here at the Humane and, and watched the Black Bears kicker not make that. That's a 45-yarder. Or any college kicker, yeah. Sure. You know, yep. I'm not yeah, I'm not picking on the black. No, of course I'm not. 45-yarders no. is, uh, is one heck of a performance. And we we noticed that the minute that we were sitting out there in the pregame watching oh, yeah. uh, both teams, immediately you could, you could almost hear the impact his foot was making on the ball. Draws the eye. You watch it, what he was doing. And, I, you know, that one just uh, sneaked over. But... A little, I think he might have he, he, you know, the right situation on a hot <laughs> night like this. Give him 50. You know, the, <laughs> there's no wind. I tell you, you know, we were right down on the field and right near him. And at, at some point, you kind of you spun your head around like, oh, my goodness, he is. He was kicking from the 25, so a 35-yard, even nailing them, just one after another. So remember, Belfast won the toss to open the game. They deferred. So they're going to get the football here to start the third quarter. And, you know, down 41-8. to eight, See if they can get anything positive going here. But here's Omar again. Boy, only got it to the 15 this time. Oh, we're going to have a little handoff here in the backfield. Hands off to Evans. As Evans is going to take it. And Evans has got some space, and here he goes. One man to beat. Evans on his horse, trying to beat Bob Wang to the end zone, and he does. My goodness, a little trickery on special teams by the Lions. And there you go. That's the way to start the third quarter. What did we just see? A little reverse there. Riker Evans, what? You dial that wow. one up. You, you don't show anything in the preseason, and you bust this one out when just when you need it. And take a look at that. Out the 15-yard line. Do so. Fantastic. And it just right up the gut. Nice scene there. Well blocked by uh, the nine guys in front of him. And off he goes. I thought maybe he was going to run a gas, but... And he goes, and then I think there might have been a somersault from somebody. I thought I saw legs akimbo there behind him. Someone else uh, very excited. But uh, just like that, a 30-point game. Yeah, so Riker Evans takes the reverse for Matt Dusso and takes it 85 yards to the house. I, t I tell you, good pursuit by John Babs there. But just, just not enough. So there you go. If you're the Lions, that's exactly how you wanted the second half to start, right there. And they'll go for two. It is Littlefield under center, and Higgins is in that tailback spot. He's going to get the pitch, and he's heading for the corner. He kind of slowed up a little bit, but he dives in. He got it. Nice job by Higgins. That makes it 44-16. We're back after this. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. The better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. 
This Belfast Lions football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. All are excited to cheer on the Belfast Lions. Well, there you see the Lions' sideline. A little uh, life over there on the visiting sideline after that 85-yard kickoff return by Riker Evans, who, as we mentioned, Coach Fairbrother said, he's very rarely going to come off the field, and he hasn't tonight. And now I wonder how John Bapps approaches this, because you just gave up a couple of scores in the yep. last, uh, you know, few possessions that Belfast has had, and... You took your foot off the gas at the end of the second quarter, but I wouldn't be surprised if that score and the two-point conversion has Coach O'Connell sending his ones back out there. He's going to try an onside kick again, but once again, the Crusaders, some good hands over there. Mitchell Mayhew, and he gets a little return out of it, too. Not just, I'm not just going to get it and fall on it. I'm going to get myself a little return here. Gutsy. <laughs> It does look like we're going to go with uh, at least, I don't think Ouellette is going out there as the, as the QB. No, I see him on the sideline. Yeah, you, you think at this point, like we talked about, John Babs wants to work on some things here too, so maybe that score gives them a little bit of license that you can bring that first team back out again, and you don't have to let up. Still, I mean, it's still 44-16, but let's see what the Crusaders and Coach O'Connell decide to do here. Well... Jack Guinness is back out there. Official timeout here. Looking over at the John Baptist sideline. Coach O'Connell took a little bit of a walk there. I'm not really sure what's happening. Well, while that's happening, we want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to bring you this game. Please let them know that you appreciate it as well. And you see the list right there. Thank you to all of them. Game two of our six-game schedule this season. A lot of motioning towards the scoreboard. I, I don't know. Well, now both teams are going to come off the field. I wonder if it has anything to do with the weather. All right, well, I just heard the word lightning down there. I don't see anything in the sky, Sally, but maybe someone's got a report that it's, it's in the distance somewhere. I did, I think, over in the distance here, see a, flash, a couple flashes uh, that perhaps were... Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna. I think they're gonna take the teams off the field. So um, I wonder where you go here. You don't have the lock. Do you go to your buses? So always uh, safety first, right? They're going to um, be very cautious here. So right after Belfast gets that kick return, we're gonna see it again here, Sully. Little trickery back there. As Duso hands it to Riker Evans, and he does the rest, boy. <laughs> got some speed. He really does. He's got and some speed. You know, Coach Fairbrother says he's a, he's a phenomenal athlete, and he showed it right there. And that's one, as the coaches uh, commiserate about how to handle this thing right. moving forward. I wonder if, uh, you know, the conversations here, it is 44-16. to 16. Are we going we gonna to have more football? Uh, you know, so there, it's a 30-minute delay. As you, so it's a 30 minutes. Every time they see a lightning strike, it, it moves the clock back to 30 minutes before they'll come back on the field. So I'm not sure where they will send the players. Obviously, a little bit of a strange situation for John Babs. They're both here on buses because 
It is a home game for the Crusaders, but uh, they're going to bounce around this year. They play in Hamden. I think they play on the Herman Field. They play at Cameron Stadium in Bangor. Have you got a chance to see that new Herman Field? That is uh, impressive what I they've done. I have not been there in person. Uh, we have done a story on it, and it, just, it looks amazing. I mean, what... What a, uh, a blessing for that community to have that facility. That's amazing. Yeah, it's one of the great stories in high school football in the entire state, really. You know, you've, you've got all these places that are struggling with numbers and teams that are trying to make their way and going up and down and some often play eight-man football just to have football. And I commend those communities for that. Herman's still, in terms of high school football program, extremely young. I just saw a lightning flash there in the distance. I don't know if you caught that on, on camera either but uh, reset the clock over in the uh, old town vicinity I, I saw that but you know Herman's a team that is hit and stuck and you yeah. got it, a lot of that comes with success you've got to take your lumps and you've got to uh, be around for a little bit to uh, to you know find your way in this main football landscape but they certainly uh, every time that it comes for us to go to Hamden and do the uh, Class C championship game or, or Northern Maine game. They seem to be there recently. Okay, so what we're going to do here is there is at least a half hour break. So we are going to leave UMaine for at least that long as uh, we don't know, like Sully said, we don't know if we're going to have football again or what they're going to do, but when we find out we'll certainly come back on the air and tell you, but for right now John Bapps leading Belfast 44-16 to uh, we're going to toss to uh, discover a summer program. Why not? The end of summer feels like summer this week. We'll uh, we'll bring you that for the moment. And uh, when things uh, change or if we have an update, we will come back to more spiels. So I uh, hope you'll stick with us as uh, we send you off to uh, discover right now. Today on Detroit Muscle, Fat Stack gets her body back as well as some added protection. Plus, it's a fuel system frenzy as we tackle the plumbing along with a tank refurbishment. Today we've got our 71 Caprice project that we've christened as Fat Stack back in the shop and we're stoked about it. This candy green paint's looking pretty sharp, but now it's time to address a lingering issue that's lying below the surface. And luckily, what we have up our sleeve is fast, easy to do, won't cost a million bucks, but it'll sure look like it when it's done. Along with that, we're going to conquer our fuel system. We've got to push some petrol from out back toward the front to feed that 800 horsepower supercharged LS. And then finally, with these two things taken care of, we can drop that green body onto our chassis. We're in kind of a predicament with our old tank here. With that old big body, well, it's kind of an odd duck car, and they don't offer an OEM replacement tank for one of them. Our plan is to run an aftermarket in-tank style pump, and what it requires you to do is to cut a hole in your tank and mount it and then plumb it as accordingly. Now, before you go to punching holes or throwing sparks, you have to remember this thing carries an explosive fuel on the inside, and you don't want to hurt yourself or anyone else, so you need to make sure that you flush one of these things out before you even try to do any kind of modification. We're going to start off by knocking the locking ring off and then pulling out the sending unit. This will allow us to drain the tank properly to get everything out of the inside of it. Once that's done and the inspection checks out, we can give the inside a good bath. We're using a fuel tank repair kit that we got from POR 15. It comes with a cleaner, metal prep, and a sealer. First step is to mix the cleaner with some warm water and then you're ready to pour it in the tank. After that, just slosh it around. With our tank not smelling like fuel anymore, it's time for us to plan our incision. Now with that, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. One is oftentimes there's baffles inside of here, and you don't want to make a hole, and then the next thing you know, you're on top of one of those. That just complicates everything. The next thing is your fuel sender. A lot of those have a swinging arm, and if you get too close to it, well, you may run into interference. That's not good. Hello and welcome. I'm Anae Lapierre, and this is Discover on WABI TV5. I'm Cheryl Oliver, and in this edition of Discover, we're visiting places to eat, shop, and play in the gateway to Maine's Northwoods, the beautiful and amazing Moosehead Lake region. 
And we'll show you some great places to stay, too, courtesy of our title sponsor, Moosehead Property Rentals. Vinny, thank you so much for supporting the show. No problem, Anne. We love being a part of the Moosehead community, and we're happy to support the local economy as well. And we're really excited to show you some of our beautiful rental properties. I can't wait. It's all coming up next on Discover. Spending time in the Moosehead Lake region is an experience beyond compare. And it's even better when you find the perfect place to stay while you're here. Moosehead Property Rentals is your resource for finding the right vacation property for your needs. Vinny, what makes Moosehead Property Rentals stand out from other vacation rental services? That's a great question, Anae. Um, I would say for Moosehead Property Rentals, we pride ourselves on our customer service and our personal experience for our guests as well as our owners. That being said, we also pride ourselves on our cleanliness. We find that our cleanliness in our homes is simply unmatched in the region, and we feel that that's a great asset to our properties. Can you tell me about the variety of rental properties that you offer? Sure. We offer everything from weekend camps, little places in town, seasonal places on the lake or on the ATV snowmobile trail, all the way up to high-end luxury lakefront properties. So with a call to us, you can ensure that everybody has something they can go to. So how does the booking process work? Booking process with us is super simple. You can do it with our website, Airbnb, VRBO, home to go all with online credit card portals, or if somebody needs to, they can call me personally, and I'll put the reservation in over the phone, and then email and send them a confirmation. Now, what if a guest has questions or needs help? How do you handle any issues that may come up? That's a great question. With our personalized service, all guests, owners, and prospective guests and owners can reach us at any time, any day with our cell phone service. We also are very responsive to texts and emails for any inquiries that may come up. So what about seasonality? Glad you asked. So seasonality here in the Moosehead region is huge. Obviously, summertime is our booming season, and everybody loves the summer in Maine. However, we still have rentals that are available in the fall for hunters and fishermen alike, as well as people coming up to look at leaves and just see the wildlife. Wintertime here is also huge. We have tons of snowmobiling opportunities, both for seasonal rentals as well as weeks or weekends. A lot of our properties have direct ATV and snowmobile trail access, and we have a lot of good spring fishing rentals as well up in Rockwood right on the river where the fishing is world class. Are there any other rental terms that we should know about? Absolutely. We try to keep our terms as simple as possible. But we also offer midterm stays for traveling professionals or folks that might like to stay a little longer. However, we still are working on offering more long-term stays as something that's really needed in the Greenville area, and we are doing our very best to deliver that. If you love your stay, you can make it permanent. Vinny, the agents at Scott Harding & Associates, powered by eXp, are ready to help. Absolutely, Anae. Not only do we work here, we live here too, and we love it. We offer luxury agents, commercial agents, and any other thing somebody could need. So if you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, or work with a commercial property, we can help. And we're bringing on new agents, too. So if we have new agents looking for unmatched support or you're thinking about getting a real estate license, give us a call. Thank you, Vinny. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Of course. To book your Moosehead Lake Region vacation home, contact Moosehead Property Rentals in Greenville. We'll take a closer look into some of their properties as the show continues. But now, let's check in with Cheryl to see what she's discovered. Thank you, Ine. Yes, I'm so excited to be in Greenville and part of the Discover team. But here in Greenville, one of the highlights of visiting this beautiful town is the lodge at Moosehead Lake. We had the opportunity to visit with them over the holidays, but so much has changed. I'm here with Bev Burgess, the proprietor of the lodge at Moosehead Lake. Bev, this place is absolutely stunning. So tell us about the updates that you've done since we were here last. So many updates here at the Lodge. We have touched every aspect. We have put new roofs on all three buildings, exterior painting, landscaping. We've touched every aspect of the Lodge from the guest rooms, new beds, bedding, and all of the common areas. And we're just super excited about the luxury changes for our guests. So, Bev, your guests, they go out and they play hard all day, and then they come back to a great meal, and they're able to relax in luxury and calmness. And can you tell us a little bit about 368 Maine? Yes. So, here at the Lodge, we like to say it is fine dining without all of the fuss. We want the focus to be on Chef Tyler's food and the experience here at the Lodge and our wonderful hospitality that we have. Well, clearly, it's, it's the food that sets you apart. Can we meet the chef behind it? Let's go meet Chef Tyler. Let's do it. I'm here with Tyler Upton, the executive. I'm going to rework my schedule. I'm going to rework my schedule. And Friday, I'm going to be free Friday to 5 p.m. 
Welcome back to Morse Field in Orono, everyone. John Small along with Brian Sullivan. And you see it happening right now. They have brought the teams back on the field. They're shaking hands. They have called this one. Uh, the coaches, Coach Fairbrother, Coach O'Connell, met with the officials for about 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes at uh, midfield. And you saw them shaking hands. And uh, with lightning in the area, they're not going to take any chances. So they agreed to just call the game. So that's going to be your final. John Bapps uh, beating Belfast 44-16. to And... Uh, what a performance. When John Babs goes to 1-1, one and one, Belfast will fall to 0-2. Oh what a performance tonight by the Crusaders, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, shot out of a, a cannon, like, wow. you know, somebody in, in on a crusade uh, way back in the day. And uh, they looked so good in every aspect of the game. And uh, offense, defense, special teams, I couldn't really pick, pinpoint anything that Coach O'Connell and his staff are going to be able to speak negatively about. Uh, and, and if you're Belfast, John, being down the way that they were, I really think that there are, when you do go to the tape, you can point to a couple of things where you said, hey, it was bad, but we stuck with it, we mm -hmm. had some positive things happen, and look at this, look at that, some building blocks to have uh, some positive things to grow from in the, really the second quarter and in the early in the third in this one. Yeah, and you know, boy, they, st they had that big kickoff return to start the first, uh, the second half, and the second that that happened, uh, the lightning came, and uh, um, so they really didn't get a chance to get back on the field to, to build on that positive momentum. But uh, Belfast will go back home. They'll take on Old Town next week. Uh, John Baps will <laughs> go go back home. We'll put in quotes. Go back home. They'll be at Pottle Field next week as a Freeport comes to town. But uh, you know, before we go tonight, we got to pick a player of the game, right? got to be Logan McMahon, right? I would think so. My goodness. 42-yard touchdown run, a 65-yard punt return. Um, he was just everywhere tonight. Uh, just an incredible uh, performance uh, by the senior for the John Baps Crusaders. Um, player of the game, sponsored by Renewal by Anderson. A better way to a better window. Set up your free consultation today. Logan McMahon in a uh, abbreviated game will be your player of the game. An honorable mention to, uh, I think, you know, I have to say, because the kick was so good. The, we have to mention, it was good. Honest Omar. Honest Omar. Number just 12 amazing. in yeah. your program, number one in your special team's heart. <laughs> that kid was fantastic. He, he's, uh, you know, here at John Baps, he's originally from Kazakhstan, and he was so impressive in pregame, and anybody can look good in pregame. You know, it's okay. To, it's fine. One thing to get sure. off the bus and be impressive, but to do it in a game yep. and to knock through a 45-yarder on a D1 field, uh, an honorable mention for our, our player of the game honors. I'm with you on that. And consistently uh, all night kicking the football to the 10-yard line. And then, you know, got to the 15 that last time for Belfast, 85-yard touchdown return. So that's going to do it. A short night for us, and uh, we'll be back in action a week and a half. Uh, Saturday, September 16th, 1 o'clock, we'll be down in Newport as uh, the Nokomis Warriors will host the Winslow Black Raiders. That will be a 1 p.m. start on Saturday, September 16th. We look forward to that one. For now, though, tonight, John Bass, 44, Belfast 16 is your final. My partner, Brian Sullivan, our director, Brett Worsler, whole TV5 crew. I'm John Small. Have a great Thursday night, everyone.